Okay, so yesterday, what did we what did we do? I think we were here, no? Yesterday, um, consider. Uh, are you able to see the slide now? You are able to see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay, so yesterday I think we started somewhere here, no? Um, so consider through thickness uh, sharp track. There is the sharp track in a linear elastic isotropic body subjected to mode one. Mode one is nothing but. Uh, tensile uh, loading okay so an arbitrary stress element is taken over here uh, in the vicinity of the crack tip this is the crack tip okay with coordinates r and theta relative to the crack tip and crack plane is also shown okay this is the crack plane x y r theta are the coordinates of uh, crack tip and a small element is taken which has got sigma x sigma y and tau x y so you remember uh, the sigma x sigma y and tau x we did in um, more circle okay we took a small element during construction of more circle we saw such an element correct element subjected to stress in x direction stress in y direction and subjected to shear stress as well in such case from a linear elasticity theory uh, so what we have is sigma x is again dependent on k and r and theta sigma y as well and tau x y as well they are they depend on r and theta and uh, the value of uh, stress intensity factor k. Uh, have we taken this equation? Have we taken this equation? Please take out your notes and check whether you have noted down this equation. Yes, sir. Noted down this equation yesterday? Yes, sir. OK, next. So uh, that's what I said. The um, normal and shear stress in the vicinity of the crack tick are uh, dependent on r, theta, and k, right? Uh? <coughs> the magnitudes of these stress at a given point are thus dependent entirely on k. So that is stress intensity factor or uh, stress field parameter. So what this uh, stress intensity factor depends on is it depends upon loading, crack shape, mode of crack displacement whether it's mode one mode two mode three. of course the discussion is all about mode one only and uh, component or specimen configuration okay so it, this is the fundamental parameter of linear elastic fracture mechanics okay so the loads uh, the value of stress intensity factor again come back stress intensity factor is k is equal to stress into root pi into a according to Griffith okay then according to Irwin again uh, the rate uh, energy release rate is equal to k square by e into 1 minus nu square for plane strain and k square by e for plane stress so in both uh, the thing uh, both the uh, stress intensity factor according to Griffith is so the, R, uh, the other way is stress is equal to k by root pi into a okay so Stress intensity factor is a very, very important parameter in linear elastic fracture mechanics. Is that OK? <coughs> then we considered a small element uh, in the, the stress field. And then at the crack tip, we took R and theta's uh, uh, coordinates uh, for a small element. And then uh, sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y are taken, which entirely depends upon the value of k, that is stress intensity factor. Again, this stress intensity factor depends on loading, crack shape, mode of crack displacement, and component configuration. Is that OK? <clears throat> what you do is take out your notebook. Note down. Uh, the stress intensity factor depends on these four parameters. Please note down these four in your notebook.
Have you noted down the previous uh, sketch, uh, Ethan? Sukrut? Yes, sir. We have noted down the sketch, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, finished up. Shall we go to the next slide? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Yeah. Again, uh, the reference value for K for true thickness with a crack dimension of length 2A in an infinite sheet subjected to tensile stress S yes, is given by, okay, S root pi into A. This is what we have seen in the previous slide also. So what he has done is for root pi, he has taken it out. So therefore, the stress intensity factor will be can be written as 1.77 into stress into root of crack length. So for other crack geometries, configurations, and loadings, we can have k is equal to stress into root pi into a into alpha. Okay, or s into root pi a f into f of a by w, or s root a into y okay we can use any of these equations where alpha f of same one thing you should uh, know is here it is into i'll just type there okay this is what okay <clears throat> okay where um alpha f of a by w and y are dimensionless parameters and w is a width dimension is that okay for are you there so it essentially depends upon these dimensionless parameters and then for single or double edge crack in a semi infinite plate that is a finite plate right now so a by w approaching to zero what we are going to get is k is equal to 1.12 into s into root pi into a so then take this uh, root pi out then what you're going to get is 1.99 s into root a which is approximately equal to 2 s root a so that is the value of stress intensity factor k are you there now what you do is just note down this so for uh, <coughs> stress intensity factor k is equal to s into root pi into a that is equal to 1.77 s into root a and note down this equation also note down what these are and then for when a by w approaches to zero so this parameter will go so what we are left with is 1.12 s into pi into a so <clears throat> that's going to be the value of alpha okay note down these equations Clearly note down what is K, what is S, what is A. A is uh, the crack length, okay. Crack length is A.
Finished, huh? Noted down. Yes, sir. Finished. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. So yes, that's about uh, uh, stress intensity factor, which is essentially a basis for LEFM. And uh, by taking uh, the crack and uh, at the crack uh, edge, consider coordinates r and theta and consider a small element. Okay, so the values of stress in x, y, and z, uh, tau x, y depends upon stress intensity factor in r and theta coordinates. Again, the stress intensity factor depends on loading, crack shape, mode of crack displacement, and uh, structure configuration. And then these are the equations uh, that is k is equal to s into root pi into a is the stress intensity factor equation. Now let us look at crack tip plastic zone. Next reading is crack tip plastic zone. Okay, just note down these uh, sketches. <clears throat> note down these sketches. This is plastic zone size at the tip of through thickness crack. So this is plane strain mode one. This is a mid section. So that is when you take this mid section over here, this is how it looks like. Again, it is X and Y coordinates over here. This is the crack tip and this is the direction and this is the surface and this is the crack tip. Okay. Just note down these three sketches. This is plane stress mode one. This, this is a plane strain mode one. Are the sketches visible clearly on your screens? Yes, sir. Okay. Crack tip plastic zone. That is the heading. Crack tip plastic zone. Okay, did you note it down? Noted? Yes, sir. Okay. See, it is simple. You should read it this way. It is essentially plastic zone at crack tip. That is, plastic zone is what? Where it is deformation is uncontrolled or very large. Okay. So the plastic zone at crack tip is what crack tip plastic zone is all about. So the local plasticity at the crack tip controls. One second. Okay. 
the local plasticity at the crack tip controls what it controls is it will control both fracture and crack growth so the behavior of crack tip that is the local plasticity at the crack tip would control both how the crack will propagate or how the crack will grow and also the fracture that is the eventual uh, thing is fracture okay so <clears throat> It is possible to calculate plastic zone size at the crack tip as a function of stress intensity factor. What is stress intensity factor here? It is K and yield strength. Is it okay? So essentially, please understand that the local plasticity at the crack tip, okay, will control what all it control? It will control both fracture and crack growth okay so then now it is possible to calculate this plastic zone size at the crack tip as a function of stress intensity factor and yield strength so once we can calculate this then we can know how much the crack will grow at that particular instant now so what they use is they use a stress field equation and von mises or maximum shear yield criteria so we know what this uh, maximum shear stress yield criteria that is maximum shear stress theory or uh, the von mises or distortion energy theory so these things we have learned so based on that these two people one is uh, there are two models that are available one is in irwin model another is dugdale model okay you can call dugdale or whatever you want you can call so two models for approximating the plastic zone size are given by Irwin model and Duckdale model, okay? Because this plastic zone or local plasticity at the crack tip controls fracture and crack growth. So therefore, we have to calculate plastic zone size at the crack tip as a function of stress intensity factor and yield strength. Then what are the models that are there to calculate plastic zone size are given by Irwin and Duckdale model. Are you, are you, are you there now? So plastic zone is the zone where the deformation is large and the crack growth depends upon stress intensity factor and yield strength. Okay. So the plastic zone size calculation model, okay, are given by the Irwin model and Duckdale model. Now let's look at what this Irwin model is and what this Duckdale model says all about in approximating the models for plastic zone size because plastic zone size depend uh, plastic zone size determines the crack growth and fracture you understand what i'm telling are you able to follow okay yeah yes sir okay so what the sirwin model So substitute yield strength at a distance R and so on. So there is, uh, this is the equation that we are going to get from the mono monotonic loading condition, plastic stress, plain stress, plastic zone size, 2R, 2R subscript Y at the crack tip in the plane of crack is given by this equation or that is plastic zone radius 2RY is equal to 1 by 3 pi, okay, uh, into K in by SY whole square. This is the equation. That is uh, plane strain plastic zone in the plane of crack is usually taken as one third of plane stress value. So this is the plane stress value. This RY stands for plastic zone radius. Okay. So that's what we are trying to learn here. Plastic zone size. Plastic zone size in the form of plastic zone radius. So this is for plane stress model. And this is for plain strain model. You understand what I said? Now you note down this sentence. Two models for approximating the plastic zone size are given by Irwin and Duckdale. <coughs> note down this sentence. Then we will go to that equation. The purpose of making it to note down these things is by the time I transfer you the slides, 
then by the time you read you would have forgotten all these wordings also so if all these things are there in notebook it will be there in your memory a bit longer okay that's the intention of making you to write you will get practice of uh, the sketches also Noted? Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now what to do is, please note down, <clears throat> plane stress plastic zone size 2 or Y. Please note down, plane stress plastic zone size 2 or Y at the crack tip in the plane of crack is given by, write down this entire equation. Yeah, again, there may be confusion here. What does SY stands for? It stands for yield stress. Okay. What does K stands for? What does K stands for? Stress intensity factor. Excellent. Okay. Good. Please note down. Uh, plane stress, plastic zone size to or Y at the crack tip in the plane of crack is given by this equation. Plane strain plastic zone size in the plane of crack is usually taken as one third of the plane stress value. So one third of this, one third of this is taken. Not on the equations completely. This is according to Irwin model to find out plastic zone size <coughs> or plastic zone radius according to Irwin.
Finish so. Finish done? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's move on. Yeah. So this is the Duckdale model. That was your win model. This is Duckdale model. So model, this is the model which describes cracked plastic zone. Uh, of course, this is um, this model is widely used. And uh, this is for the condition of plane stress. Okay. So what he did is he modeled the plastic regions extending beyond the physical crack length 2C. So this is the physical crack length 2C. He went beyond and added another distance R. Can you see the figure here? So he went a little beyond the crack size of 2C and uh, he added narrow strip with a distance of R over here. Okay. What you do is note down Duckdale model, note down this sketch clearly. This distance is A, this is 2C, this is R, and it is subjected to tensile stress. <coughs> yes. And this is the plastic zone here and plastic zone over here. SY is yield strength. Please note down the sketch clearly. Is the slide visible for you? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Please note down the sketch clearly. This is 2C, crack length, then uh, extension uh, through a narrow strip having a distance R, and uh, this is where your uh, yield stress value is. And this is the plastic zone, whatever that is indicated over here is plastic zone. <coughs> and this is uh, subjected to plate is infinite plate is subjected to tensile stress. <coughs> Finished, huh? Finished? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, according to Dugdale, the plastic zone distance R is given by pi square by pi square C by 8 into S into S by Y. That is stressed by yield strength. So rearranging in terms of K and SY. So the plastic zone distance R is given by pi by 8 into K into S5 whole square. Is it okay? And then if RY is less than A by 8, A is, uh, as A is, this is the distance, okay? 
that is a length of crack over here a okay so if the radius of uh, plastic zone radius r y is less than a by 8 and can be released to a by 4 under lefm principle that's what uh, he says that is at the crack tip is small relative to local geometry plastic zone radius is very small uh, compared to local geometry so no modification of stress intensity factor is uh, required that's it right so according to dugdale model okay so in terms of k and sy the equation of r that is what is the distance r over here this is the distance r which he assumes or which he considers the extending beyond the physical crack length this is the crack length physical crack length is 2c he extends it beyond the physical crack length by a narrow strip having a distance r so this distance r is equal to pi by 8 into k by sy whole square so this distance r will give you that okay so the plastic zone distance r is pi by 8 into k into sy whole square please note down this equation please note down this equation Finished up. <coughs> R is almost equal to pi by 8 into k by sy whole square. You do one thing, uh, one of you, if you have um, calculator, what is 1 by pi? is 0 0.318 okay so what does this say 5 by 8 0.39 okay so the difference between uh, Irwin and Dugdale model is that he takes this uh, this constant as 0.39 whereas in Irwin model how much he takes there 1 by pi is 0.31 okay so that's the difference between uh, so both of them have made a study and then uh, the plastic zone distance r is given by 0.39 times k by sy whole square in case of Dugdale model and the uh, 0.31 into k by sy whole square in 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 uh, by Irwin model that is the difference between these two theories now so important restriction to the LEFM is that plastic zone size at the crack tip must be very small relative to crack length as well as geometrical dimensions. Another restriction for LEFM is net nominal stress in the crack plane must be less than the yield strength. This is the condition for linear, of course, linear elastic fracture mechanics basic understanding is that the stress is, that is it obeys Hooke's law, correct? Huh? You remember that uh, the other day we learned about LEFM basics. So it presumes a crack and it uh, takes that the bulk of material behaves according to Uxla. So again here also, so nominal stress in the crack, crack plane must be less than the yield strength. That means it should compulsorily obey Uxla. Is that okay? Did you get it? What we What is the limitation of LEFM? Okay. Yes, sir. Now we will go back and try to uh, see what we learned in the entire LEFM concepts. So, in the LEFM concepts, what we learned is fracture mechanics is used in LEFM concept that we learned. Then, loading modes can be mode 1, 2, and 3. We know what is mode 1, 2, and 3. And again, mode 1 crack extension only will be covered because that is the one which is. Uh, 
all the uh, research and investigations will grow in mode 1 because tensile is subjected components are subjected to tensile stress next what we learned is we learned about uh, stress intensity factor which is essentially given by griffith to be equal to stress into root pi into a where a is crack length so it is the product of for field stress and the square root of crack length and material properties governed crack extension for the two materials so this is stress a is crack length then uh, energy release rate g is given by k square by e for plane stress and k square by into 1 minus a square for plane stress according to griffith's energy approach <coughs> next um what irwin or uh, irwin assumed is that there is a crack present then the coordinates are taken r and theta coordinates r and theta is nothing but you can assume a circle around this crack tip that's all r and theta coordinates are nothing but it won't travel only in x direction it won't travel only in y direction when we say r and theta coordinates okay around this crack tip we can have a radius and crack can go in any angle that's all that's the r and that's why we take r and theta coordinates and then we consider a small elemental length elemental uh, piece in the crack uh, zone and then we try to calculate sigma x sigma y and tau xy so which are essentially depending upon r theta and the value of k which is called stress intensity factor okay this is what we learned sigma x sigma y and tau x y they depend upon stress intensity factor r and theta then now uh, we try to learn about more uh, into stress intensity factor we wanted to learn little more in uh, uh, about stress intensity factor it's also called stress field parameter or stress intensity factor which essentially depends on loading crack shape mode of crack uh, displacement and uh, structure configuration so the stress intensity factor depends upon these four parameters okay and it is fundamental for a lfm approach then after that we learn that uh, for a through thickness uh, k is given by 1.77 s into root a that is a is crack length s is uh, stress okay and then uh, we arrived at another equation so finally we can say k is equal to 1.99 s root a which is approximately 2s root a for single or double edge crack in a semi infinite plate semi infinite plate is you can take it as finite plate of larger dimension okay so that is stress intensity factor then we learned a little bit about crack tip plastic zone that is plastic zone around the crack tip is what we try to learn so <clears throat> it is possible to calculate plastic zone size at the crack tip plastic zone size at the plastic zone is nothing but zone where plastic deformation takes place that's it so uh to calculate plastic zone at the crack tip uh as a function of stress intensity factor and deal strength that's why stress intensity factor is k okay so <clears throat> there are two models for approximating the plastic zone size that is one is irwin model another is the dale model so what does irwin model says is that the plastic zone radius or size 2 or y at the crack tip is given by 1 by pi into k into s by y whole square so if you consider plane strain condition it is it's to be taken as 1/3 of plane stress value so therefore 1 by 3 pi into k by s y whole square will give you the plastic zone radius okay according to irwin then we took dugdale model in dugdale model what he assumes is that he extends the plastic region beyond the actual crack length of 2c by a distance r okay so when he does that he tries to find out an equ through equation the value of this plastic zone distance r that is essentially given by pi by 8 into k by sy whole square again k and sy the intensity factor and yield stress is it okay so that is what is plastic zone distance r given by dugdale model and then we know the limitation of lfm that is it should be have or it should obey hooke's law and the crack plane uh, the stress in the crack plane must be less than yield strength that is the precondition okay so next is 
fracture toughness please note down fracture toughness kc comma k1c Learn what is this uh, KC that we are talking about? It is nothing but KC is on nothing but critical value of K. That's all. So when does this critical value of K comes to into picture? Is in a condition in which crack extends in a rapid or unstable manner without increase in load. So that is essentially what happens uh, beyond your ultimate strength. In case of stress strain diagram, if you remember, beyond ultimate stress. Even without application of load, the deformation keeps going till the fracture occurs. So that value of K, K is called the critical value of K essentially is given by critical stress or stress at uh, instability and the crack length at instability is AC. Okay, so S into root pi ac into f of ac by w is it is like you know true stress and true strain that we learned so we put um, in uh, true stress what did we what is the area of what is the area that we consider it is load by instantaneous area of cross section correct similarly here we are going to take instantaneous crack length at instability is ac and this is the nominal stress, which is at failure. Okay, so that way we can take. So Kc is fracture toughness depends on material, strain rate, temperature, and thickness. Is that okay? So it is the critical value of K is nothing but Kc, which is given by the equation out there. Okay, please note down this equation and these terms. Please note down this. <clears throat> Not on this critical value of k is denoted as kc that is equal to so that value of kc will give you the fracture is the fracture toughness which depends upon the type of material rate of strain temperature thickness Not it down, huh? Not it down? No, sir. Not it down. Yeah? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll come to yeah tomorrow uh, I think for today we can stop but yeah what is your uh, USN number here is there do you have college USN number that is uh, mail IDs one by yes sir yeah. yes sir one by please let me know nineteen MMD one second one by nineteen mm all small no yes sir. 1B by 19 MMD, yeah. Capital. Is, no, 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 for your mail ID. MMD is yeah, according to USN. But what is your mail ID in college mail ID? What is the college mail ID that you please let me know? No, sir, they are not giving.